I'm Paula O'Brien. I'd like to talk to you today about using Adobe Photoshop Sketch for digital painting. You don't want to take your real paints or your real brushes. You want to step away from the studio and your sketchbooks and get into digital painting. It's very portable and lots of fun. Adobe Photoshop Sketch works with the Apple Pencil, works with all devices, Android or Apple. It's a great program and it's free. Let's use the Apple Pencil. I'm using an iPad first generation iPad Pro with the Apple first generation iPad Pencil. To start, you're going to make a new canvas. You pick your shape and size of canvas. Lots of things to choose from, pre-made things, or things that you've made yourself. So let's pick, let's just pick the iPad Pro landscape, which will be good for this demonstration. One of the great things about Apple Pencil compared to a regular stylus, let's just pick a different brush, go in here again, let's pick a graphite pencil, here I'm going to pick the size of the pencil, the color of the pencil, and here is my line with it right in the tip. If I use the side, I'm shading, just like with a pencil. Now if I use my finger, I would just have a solid line no matter what I did with my finger. And again, same thing with an inexpensive stylus. Whereas the Apple Pencil has a very precise tip and then this lovely shading element, which works with some of the different brushes. Now let's just add a new sketch layer and hide that one. Let's explore the different elements over here. There are five tools, one, two, three, four, five, plus the eraser that you can have like paint brushes loaded at your fingertips. If you want to use five different colors of pastel, you can have them all lined up here to take in and out, or you can keep swapping them. I always like to start a sketch on the second layer, and I'll show you why. Here's the different choices of brushes. I usually like to start with the marker brush with the Adobe line, and I'll start with a color, maybe a mid-gray, and with a size, something like this. This is transparency moving it to be more transparent and more opaque. So if I start with a line here, and I wanted to make it bigger, if I want to go in and pick a different tool, I can pick another tool right here, let's say Soft Pastel. And let's pick a color, this purple color. But let's go back into that color, and you, instead of choosing from themes, which there are many. I'll go into Picker and just adjust. Here's my density, here's my color. Like this, it's lighter or darker. Now, this is like a pastel, nice and textured. Or if I want to make it more transparent, a little softer. Let's go into this bottom layer below. Let's pick the watercolor brush. i pick a turquoise and the size, very big. Let's hide the tools. Here's my watercolor brush, and it's behind these other layers. Bring the tools back. If I pick another color, and let's go back into here, and this is a watercolor brush, so it's as if the water's really flowing. You'll see it start to bloom. You'll see the effect of the watercolors really start to bloom. If I get to a point where I really like it, I can take a little brush and fan it, just like you would with a real hair dryer and a brush. What's very interesting is all the different brushes, let's go through them, watercolor flat, acrylic brush, thick acrylic, smudge, they actually all act like the real items in your real studio would. So if we build up some different layers, On this layer that's in between, let's take a marker, marker chisel. Let's go to this nice yellow there. This layer is in between things. I'm on this layer, I'm underneath the purple, but I'm on top of this watercolor layer. I can take this layer and move it. Now it's below this watercolor layer. Or if I move it to the top, Top, it's on top. If I pick this layer, I can transform it. Let's pick it. 
I can size it. I can squeeze it. I can do all kinds to it. If I love that, I can select it or I can say cancel. So the basic thing is building up layers, playing with some textures on top, playing with your brushes, and when you're finished, save your image, and you can also export the time-lapse video of the process. So let's save that video too. Done. Let's just imagine this was complete. Well, let's actually put our signature in on top. Add a sketch layer, pick a nice thin ink pen, pick a color, let's say white. Now, see, I just went to move that, and that's a mistake. I went to pinch it. You want to go back? You can go back a step. You can go back a step. Let's take this, zoom in, say you want to sign it, and that's your signature. Pinch it and release. Let's play with this layer and go in with the eraser. Again, the eraser comes in different sizes and different transparencies. So if I have it quite transparent, see it's 56%. I'm on this layer here, on this, erasing this black layer here. Or if I'm on this layer, I'm erasing this green layer here. If I'm on the purple layer, I'm erasing the purple and exposing below. The eraser becomes a tool just like the others. It's really worth experimenting with all these different brushes and just finding out what they do. Let's take a look at that. I've made an album of drawings I've done with Photoshop Sketch. Taking it to life drawing, one minute poses, 25 minute poses, working with the charcoal effect. This is a 30 minute pose. This is with real watercolor effects in Mexico, plein air painting. Little squiggly lines on top. So many different options. One of the real reasons I wanted to improve my digital painting was I wanted to take my iPad and paint in cathedral and places that you're not allowed to bring real paint. Or just for the ease of traveling. Different effects. Marker brush. Into museums. This was a, a mummy museum in Mexico. On the street. Quick sketches while waiting for the bus. To life drawing. Lots of textures. Lots of textures and layers. Plein air painting in Mexico. Life drawing, one minute sketches. Lots of smooshy effects. Eventually, it's really good to sample your brushes with the same size and same color and just explore them in the different ways that they work. You can even make your own brushes with lots of different colors and textures, and we'll talk about that later. These are brushes I made myself by photographing different things. In our drawing, let's go into another layer and add a paintbrush, acrylic, color, size. And if we look at that, it actually has a sort of texture to it. You can see a kind of smear effect going on. That was the acrylic brush. And if we pick the thick acrylic, even more texture, ink marker. Some of these brushes you can use with the shading aspect of the Apple Pencil working, and some you can't. Like with the graphite pencil, you can use the pencil and you can use the shading. With the pastel, I'm not sure. There's the pastel. And has a nice texture. And again, you can go in with the eraser, which is set to quite transparent, or you can make it very opaque. And I'm exposing through to the next layer below. Let's hide my tools. So again, when you eventually create your masterpiece and you've put your name on it, you want to export the picture, save your image, and you might want to create the time lapse and export that too. Now that sketch is saved in your gallery. And here's our sketch, and here's the video of the process. So just get started and start to learn the tools, and we'll learn more about making new brushes in the next video. Thanks for watching. I'm Paula O'Brien.